Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Uh, good morning. It's Monday, May 2nd. We had showers and storms overnight into this morning, and that triggered some power outages. And then we had problems on the road as well. So it's been an yes. interesting start to the work week and the month. Yeah, a very a busy start and very noisy overnight. But things have calmed down a little bit. Let's go ahead and check in with Justin Horn. Yeah, much calmer now. It, it was a little loud overnight. Some of you may have slept through the showers and storms that made their way through San Antonio. We didn't get a ton of rain here, but there were some slick roads as Mark and Steph pointed out. And as we look at the last several hours here, as we go into the overnights, this was around midnight. You see where some of the heavier storms were down to the south and west of San Antonio. Here in town, it was mostly light to moderate rain, but we did get lightning and thunder. This system continued off to the east around 2 a.m., still seeing some moderate rain here in town. And then by 4 a.m., we noticed we had a wind gust of 71 miles per hour in New Braunfels on the back side of this system, which you can see sometimes. Uh, and it probably caused some power outages there up around New Braunfels. We also had some gusty winds here in San Antonio. It has since cleared out. We've got all the rain out of here. Some clouds still lingering, and we'll see some clouds off and on clouds today. There you see the satellite picture. Temperatures at this hour sitting at 75 degrees at the airport, 73 Randolph, 79 Stinson, 73 and mostly cloudy in Uvalde. Pollen count is in. Molds are in the high category. They did jump up some 3,040, but here's the good news. I think we're really pretty much done with oak season here. It is really starting to fall off. It's at 70 and in the low category. Here's the forecast. We're going to keep it mostly cloudy through the lunch hour, probably even into the afternoon. So temperatures aren't going to get uh, just real hot today. 87 degrees by 5 p.m., 85, 6 p.m., maybe some clearing a little bit later this evening. We are going to get some hot temperatures, though, in the seven-day forecast. Mother's Day especially looking hot. And we've got some rain chances to talk about. Plus, we'll update you on those rainfall totals. It's all coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Steven. Hey, thanks, Justin. I appreciate that. Let's get a look at 35 at New Laredo. We are seeing some progress out there six hours after this crash was reported. I'll step out of the shot and give you a closer look. Now, earlier we saw that big rig that was hanging off the overpass there at 35 at New Laredo. Thankfully, again, we are seeing some good news out there, some progress where first responders were able to pick it up using a crane. We had two King Kong wreckers out there as well, but it has been a very long morning for these folks out there. Let's show you to the map because we, although we are seeing some progress, uh, we are also seeing some of the backups that are still taking place right there. We'll, we'll toss that video in just a moment, but 35 South and at New Laredo Highway, you can see traffic is backed up about three miles to Somerset Road. So although that scene is close, slowly wrapping up, we're going to continue to watch it closely. Now it has been a long morning, so let's go ahead and show you that video shot by a photojournalist, Tim Stewart, earlier where we had that big rig that was causing massive problems earlier. Now TechSout originally reported the crash at I-35 southbound. Traffic, however, was being directed off the New Laredo exit. The northbound lanes of 35 also had to be closed down as a precaution uh, there at the exit. But uh, as you see from that video, it did take them quite some time. We did see them cutting the guardrail again, seen right there in that video. Two King Kong records were out there working to clear this mess up and we do know that we are seeing that progress now taking place back here at trans guide but it did take them again over six hours to clear this up and again one last look here 35 at new laredo although we are seeing this mess being wrapped up or cleaned up i should say we're going to watch it closely and give you those updates throughout the morning guys Thank you, Stephen. San Antonio police now using the words capital murder to describe late night shooting deaths of two men at a southwest side apartment complex. They found both victims in the laundry room of the complex on Rust Leaf Drive near West Military and Medina Base Road. That's not far from Joint Base Lackland. Katrina Weber following that story tells us why this may still be a scene haunting neighbors. Although police told us that no one actually saw the shooting, they will see signs of it here today. Now, there's a pretty big pool of blood here on the ground, as well as blood inside this laundry room and bullet holes in the walls. That lack of witnesses is a problem for police. Right now, they say they don't know exactly what happened at this laundry room in the 100 block of Rustleaf Drive. They did find two men, one who they say was 18 years old, dead from gunshot wounds. Police did not mention anything about any weapons being found here or offer any other details about the shootings. They told us neighbors called them after 11 last night, saying they heard multiple gunshots. But police say so far they have not heard from anyone who actually saw the shooting 
or knows who did it. Police do tell us that they are at the very beginning stages of their investigation in this case. So right now they don't have a lot of information and they do urge anyone who might know something about this to give them a call. Reporting from the West Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. And here's a look at today's Night at Nine. The body of a 17 year old who disappeared while fishing Saturday night was recovered Sunday. The U.S. Coast Guard found the body of the ear, Elias Rodriguez, in the middle of San Luis Pass. That's where he was last seen fishing. Coast Guard officials say the area is incredibly hazardous for fishing and swimming because of strong tidal currents and rapidly changing water depth. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is meeting with the Polish president today after speaking with the Ukrainian president over the weekend. It's a show of support for a NATO ally. This comes as Russia's war in Ukraine is prompting Sweden and Finland to consider joining the alliance. Here in the U.S., lawmakers preparing to take up our leave package for Ukraine as early as this week. It's a $33 billion proposal from the Biden administration. Republicans have expressed support for some kind of assistance. Armed robberies and carjackings in New Orleans are skyrocketing and homicides are up 46% from last year. That's according to the Metropolitan Crime Commission. Organizers of the group believe that staffing shortages with the police force is limiting the amount of proactive policing they're able to do. Fans, friends and family are giving a lot of love to country star Naomi Judd, who passed away suddenly this weekend at the age of 76. Came just one day before she and her daughter were inducted last night into the Country Music Hall of Fame. Her daughters announced Naomi's death Saturday, attributing it to mental illness, but not elaborating further. Disappointing earnings from some major companies may be weighing on investors. Friday saw Amazon stock fall 14% after reporting its lowest sales growth in at least 12 years. That helped pull the S&P down 3.6% to end last week. Nearly half of the S&P 500 still have to report first quarter earnings. On tap this week, some big ones, Pfizer, CVS Health, Starbucks, and Uber. American shoppers may be hitting their limits. Several companies now say they're starting to see signs that inflation is changing what people buy. Cigarette maker Marlboro says smokers are switching brands. Mattress makers say demand is falling. And even florists like 1-800-Flowers say people are spending less on bouquets. Ford has recalled some of its Explorer models due to a mechanical problem that can cause the SUV to roll away while it's parked. Affected vehicles include various 2020 to 2022 Explorer models, including the Explorer Hybrid and Explorer Plug-in Hybrid. Owners are expected to be notified through the mail beginning on June 6. Dealers will replace any necessary parts or update the electronic parking brake software free of charge. Don't forget early voting ends tomorrow for the May 7th election. You can find a list of polling locations on ksat.com as well as previous election related stories we've done. Election day is Saturday and that's today's nine at nine. Well, in your other morning headlines, an apology from one of those pilots that tried to pull off that midair swap and a DoorDash delivery turns out to be a lifesaver. Plus well, seeing double at graduation and some offices are going to the dogs. David Sears is here with these stories. Good morning. Literally going to the dogs. To the dogs. Apparently a lot of dogs were adopted over the pandemic. Oh, sure. Oh, people yeah. are trying to take care of their dogs and offices are saying, we'll help you out a little bit. Okay. Well, on that in just a second, but first, a pilot trying to soften the punishment apologizing for that midair stunt that went way wrong. Remember last week we told you about the midair plane swap stunt, two pilots, two planes. The pilots jumped out of the planes while the planes were free falling. They were supposed to end up in each other's planes and get them under control. Didn't work. One made it into the other plane. The other pilot had a parachute down. One plane crashed. The FAA jumped in to investigate. Over the weekend, one of the pilots came clean and admitted he just flat out ignored the FAA. Luke Aikens was the guy heading up the stunt. He admitted that the FAA denied him permission to try that stunt, but he ignored him, kept quiet, tried it anyway. Didn't even tell the guys on his team that he'd been denied. The sponsor was Red Bull. It was live streamed on Hulu, owned by Disney, ABC's parent company. Aikens could be fined, suspended, or even lose his pilot's license. The investigation continues. All right, meet Karen Sullivan from New Bedford, Rhode Island, alive and well and able to tell her story thanks to Sophia Furtado, better known as Karen's guardian angel. A few weeks ago, Karen ordered a pizza. Sophia works for DoorDash and was on her way. When Karen came outside to get her pizza, her knee gave way. She fell down the stairs, hitting her head. Sophia showed up just in time. Karen was bleeding pretty bad. Sophia called 911, got some towels and blankets. 
The skills she learned from EMT school kicked in. I'm holding her head, uh, trying to hold C-spine because I knew she fell hard, so I didn't want her to, you know, God forbid, later down the road be paralyzed. She was my guardian angel, and if I didn't have her, I'd probably be dead. I actually wanted to be an EMT, but unfortunately, you know, with kids and life took its own course, so I had to kind of make that sacrifice. Um, so I have the background. I went through the whole schooling. I just needed to pass the test. That dream may come true because that's the other part of the story. Sophia was given an award by local first responders for being a hero and a thousand dollar scholarship from DoorDash. And she got a commitment from Karen to help her reach her goal any way she can. All right, this story is going to have you doing a double take. Meet members of the class of 2022 from Manfield High School up there in North Texas. 35, 35 sets of twins and a set of triplets graduating from this school this year. For some, graduation means separation after a lifetime being bonded like Anthony, now headed to Houston, and Angela headed to Yale. Other twins like Avery and Keaton are sticking together on their way to UT. It would definitely be a change because we're not going to be together like we've always been, but you know, you can always still call each other, text each other. We're pretty much best friends. We do everything together and we get along really well, so yeah. <laughs> excited to stay together. 35. You think they were messing with some teachers and some friends? <laughs> yeah, they the were. Yes. Yeah, that's so. All right. To put it in perspective, Mansfield has 2,600 students in the entire school. 35 sets of twins and some triplets. Wow. And finally, sometimes getting up and going to work is pretty rough on some of us. Mm -hmm. But some companies are making it easier, especially if you're a pet owner. With so many dogs being adopted during the pandemic, according to the ASPCA, 23 million across the country during the COVID lockdowns. Officers that are opening back up have become pet friendly. As an added perk, half of 500 top executives in surveys agree with the idea, saying that they are planning to allow pets at the offices. Tech companies obviously leading the way, trending, making it fuzzier. Google, Amazon, and Uber. Uber. I don't, how does Uber, Uber, I guess Uber's got an office, but if you're a driver, they got, yeah. I, yeah, know, got, I always think Uber is just driving. I don't think yeah, they, they have some offices, I'm <laughs> sure. I yeah. was just wondering. In the back seat. <laughs> this would work here. We have concrete floors everywhere. Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah. nobody you know, soils the carpet. Guys yeah. upstairs might be able to help you out with that. All right. I think, I think that's interesting. It would. Thank you, David. 910 right, right now, about 74 degrees. And you're looking at a live look at rehearsals right now for the Children's Ballet of San Antonio. They're getting ready for their performance this weekend. Max Massey is going to join us after the break and give us more of a behind the scenes look at what goes into the performance. We'll be right back. Welcome back. The award winning Children's Ballet of San Antonio will soon debut their performance of Aladdin and the Wonderful Lamp on Friday and Saturday. It's the ballet's first time back at the Majestic since the pandemic and Max Massey joins us live from this morning's practice. Hi, Max. Hi, How's Max. It going? Good morning. Good morning, guys. So these kids are amazing and the details, the props. Take a look. All of it so detailed, it really is astonishing. And we're joined here with Vanessa. Oh, Vanessa, you've been telling us that this is really three years in the making. Yes, this production is very special because we started thinking of it in 2019. It was supposed to happen in 2021, in the spring 2021, but with the pandemic disruption and the challenges, now is when we're so lucky and honored to be back at the amazing Majestic Theater to present Aladdin and the Wonderful Lamp. So what goes into a production like this? There's so much. Yes, there is a lot of preparations from even before we start auditions, there was a lot of planning, a lot of um, putting elements together and think about how we were going to bring the magic to the audience at the highest level possible. Because it's going to be quite a ride in the magic carpet to the land of Aladdin. Not to miss it. Tickets are selling very fast, so please go ahead and get your tickets now so you can get some of the best tickets. Yeah, because it's gonna be something for everybody. There is not just a ballet, there is different disciplines involved like contemporary, Mediterranean dances, um, jazz, and many others, but also we have singers and live musicians, young musicians playing some music original from the land of Aladdin. That is so cool. So you guys actually brought stuff from where Aladdin is set to take place to San Antonio. Yes, actually we have integrated a choreographer that is specialized in the uh, dances from the Arabian Peninsula and a musician 
composer that had created special scores for us for this production using instruments from the Arabian Peninsula, like the oud and the darbuka, among others. But also, we have collaborations from many organizations, like the Mediterranean Cultural Center, the Lebanese Church, which has provided us with original elements that we have been able to use in this production. That's fantastic. All right, Vanessa, thank you so much. So you see, guys, so many original elements right from the Arabian Peninsula. It is this weekend, and like they've been saying, it could be a great start to Mother's Day weekend. If you don't have any plans yet, come on down. Guys? Great idea. Max Massey, thank you very much. Tell them to break a leg out there. Thanks, Max. Let's go outside with live cam. Tell you what, it was breezy this morning. Does it stay that way all day, Justin Horn? Gusts up around 20, 25, but and not like what we saw this morning with those storms coming through. We saw some big time wind gusts as we showed you earlier. 71 mile per hour wind gust in New Braunfels did do a little bit of damage, we think, there. Uh, that has since moved off to the east. I want to show you the rainfall totals because this is important. Uh, Eagle Pass picked up a little bit of rain, some big totals down towards Tilden. Pearsall, Pleasanton did okay this morning. And this happened over an area that really needed it. So this is the latest drought monitor. And you can see where we have extreme drought here, Pearsall to Tilden. That uh, rain fell right on an area that could really use it. And not only that, we did get some rain here in San Antonio. About 13 hundredths of an inch at the airport, Stone Oak, about eight hundredths of an inch. These weren't big numbers, but at least there was a little bit of rain there as this uh, batch of rain came through. So again, almost a quarter of an inch with some showers and a few storms there. Right now, the sun's trying to pop out. We'll call it mostly cloudy, 75 degrees at the airport. Dew point is at 69, so that number's still way up there. We've got southerly winds right now at about 16 miles per hour. That cloud cover. It's going to be a little tricky today. I think most of the clouds probably are going to stick around and uh, this kind of cloud deck you see off to the west scoots east a little bit. So we're going to call it mostly cloudy much of the day here in San Antonio. There are some pretty good breaks though at the moment from Gonzales down to Bevo over to Victoria. Temperatures uh, because we're going to see clouds today, maybe not as hot as they could be. 73 right now in Holotus, 70 Bernie Stage, 74 Boulevardy, close to 80 already though at Stinson, 79 degrees there. And we mentioned those wind gusts. Yeah, it is, a, it is a little breezy out there. We're going to see some gusts close to 2025 20, throughout the rest of your Mondays. So here's how your forecast looks. By noontime, we're at 80 degrees, still mostly cloudy. 4 p.m., 86, southerly winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. 87 at 5 o'clock, and then we'll see uh, some, some clearing, I think, this evening. Temperatures down to 81 at 8 o'clock, 79 by 9 p.m. Here's the big picture. There were a lot of storms across West Texas yesterday, a ton of severe weather uh, for our friends to our north and west across the Permian Basin and Texas Panhandle. Those have all scooted east, and again, they did hold together for quite a while and brought us rain here in San Antonio. Dallas got some rain out of this. All that energy will continue to move east, and it's wake, though, there's going to be a high fire danger across West Texas. So they, they got the severe weather yesterday, and now they're going to be dealing with uh, potentially some wildfires today. Not a great situation out there. For us, our forecast calls for, again, maybe a little bit of clearing as we get into this evening. And then tomorrow morning, clouds drizzle, come back into play. So it could be a little bit damp for the morning commute on your Tuesday. As we get into tomorrow evening, I don't think we see much at all here around the area, especially around San Antonio. But... We could see one or two storms cross in from Mexico tomorrow evening, so we will put a 20% chance out to the west. Then we do it again Wednesday. Clouds fill back in, maybe some drizzle Wednesday morning. And then Wednesday afternoon, I think there's maybe a little better opportunity for a shower or storm to pop up even here around San Antonio, so 20% chance there. Our best chance is actually going to come on Thursday. Weak frontal boundary gets a little bit closer to the area. That'll be enough to kick off some showers and storms. It's that time of year where if we do get storms, there's a likelihood they could become strong to severe. So that's something we'll be watching. Here's how it looks in the seven day forecast. 20% chance Wednesday, 30% chance on Thursday. Temperatures in the 90s and watch out. Mother's Day weekend is going to be hot. Upper 90s in the forecast with mostly sunny skies. We'll be right back.
Welcome back, 923 this morning on KSAT.com. HEB turns up the heat or smoke with a new two-story barbecue restaurant. And the only hotel in a Texas national park might look a bit different the next time you visit. Really want to check this place out. RJ Marquez joins us live in the studio with those stories and more trending on KSAT.com. Yeah, good, morning. good Monday morning, guys. Hi. Feels like it's been a little bit of a while. It's been a minute since yeah. I've been with it, you guys. It's been a minute or two. Yeah. Yeah. I actually was out in West Texas, so yeah, this uh, story out there, Big Ben, definitely kind of applies to my area but let's start here with this first story of course we all know the HEB saying and it goes here everything's better well it should include bigger because that now includes the company's first two-story true Texas barbecue spot so HEB officially opened a new store in New Braunfels to replace the previous location that was right there the new location is 122,000 square feet and is located on South Walnut right off of I-35 and all the buzz this morning is all about the barbecue, yes, True Texas Barbecue was named the best barbecue chain in Texas by Texas Monthly and a top barbecue chain in the nation by Thrillist. The new location also features a home by HEB department. So a lot of good stuff going on there, but going back to the barbecue, have you guys ever had the barbecue at HEB? I don't I think have I have. Not, mm. but it sounds like it's worth a stop yeah, up there. Yeah, smoked briskets. Yeah. They got all the goods, all the fixings and stuff like that. And especially, this is going to have indoor seating as well. So yeah. a nice. lot of cool stuff going on out there. It's yeah, a little bit of a drive, but. Love the windmill fans they I have in the store. I saw that in the picture. That's, <laughs> that was that's so a cool, cool. Store. The home yeah. department, I know. Yeah. And I think HEB is planning to do more home departments as yeah. well in okay. the future. So yeah, of Look course, HEB, bigger and better always. All right, guys. Well, a lot of people, we were talking earlier, have been heading out to West. Texas for a quick getaway. I still find it interesting that Marfa has become this like totally trending spot growing up out there for years. And now the only hotel in Big Bend National Park may be getting a major facelift. So the National Park Service is giving the public a first look at the future of the Chisos Mountains Lodge in Big Bend. So the lodge was built all the way back in 1964 and has undergone several renovations since then. But there have been some structural issues with the building in more recent years. So engineers say that those issues right now are not a cause for concern for any current guests. So hopefully no one's seen this right now and freaking out about going there. But changes are on the way. So we have some artist renderings on KSAT.com of potential renovations for this lodge. So there is not currently a set date yet for the start of construction. But as you can see from those photos right there, it looks like it's going to be really cool. A nice little restaurant and, of course, a great view of the mountains out there. Yeah, check out those floor to ceiling windows, right? Oh, yeah. Great. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Floor to ceiling windows. <laughs> I like that. So uh, you can check out more of that information on KSAT.com. Com. All right, guys. Well, this is probably not a big surprise to many of us who are out here sneezing, have itchy eyes, runny nose, all of the above. But San Antonio has made a top 10 list when it comes to allergies. Yes. Shocker. Yeah, big time <laughs> shocker. <laughs> the Allergy and Asthma Foundation of America reports that San Antonio ranks fifth in the country for most challenging places to live with seasonal allergies. Other cities that ranked in the top 10 were McAllen down there in the valley. They are actually in third, interesting there. Wichita, mm. Kansas is in second, and Scranton, Pennsylvania, all the way out there in the northeast is first. So the report used spring pollen scores, fall pollen scores, and over-the-counter medicine use, and the availability of board-certified allergists, immunologists, and to determine these rankings. So if you want to get away from the allergies, the top two cities on this list were Fresno, California, and Phoenix. They are the least challenging places. I, I had heard that about parts of Arizona. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't wonder why, because it's probably so dry out there. I don't Maybe. know if there's... Yeah. I mean, yeah, overall, a, nicer weather. Kind of an arid climate. I mean, yeah. they still have some some trees. And, yeah, some and trees. cacti, so... <laughs> there we go. And we have that full list on our website. Thank you, sir. Good to yeah. see you, RJ. Thanks, guys. Thanks for joining us. 927, about 75 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. And coming up, including the latest concerns about high gas prices, it's mostly about diesel fuel and truck drivers. However, it could affect all drivers. And right now looking at 35 and 37, things look great. They also look very good at Loop 410 and Callahan. We'll get another traffic update from our traffic expert, Stephen Cavazos. Good morning, time now is 931 and I come bearing good news. 35 at New Laredo Highway, that crash that we saw involving an 18 wheeler has finally cleared out and we can see that traffic is moving without any trouble. Now keep in mind, Texas reported this crash around three this morning, so it took crews over six hours to get this cleared up. That's because we saw an 18 wheeler that was hanging off the overpass there at 35 southbound. However, although we are seeing the traffic moving through that area without any trouble, we are still seeing somewhat of a slowdown in 
on our map. You can see right now 35 South and a new Laredo Highway where that crash was reported. Traffic is still backed up about three miles to Somerset Road. Thankfully, it's not causing major other any other major issues, but hopefully that slowdown will improve before we hit noon. Getting a wider look at the map, the metro area not showing any other problems here as well. It was a pretty busy morning, but of course we have that good news here. Our 35 at New Laredo Highway will continue to watch the roads closely, but as always, make sure you do the same. Mark stuff. Thank you, Stephen. Everyone frustrated about gas prices. Now there are new concerns this time about the prices truckers are having to pay. However, as ABC's Mona Kosar Abdi reports, this is something that could affect all of us. This morning, diesel fuel prices hitting an all time high. Now $5.30 per gallon, up more than $2 from last year. Just to fill up this truck, um, I'd say about a year ago it was less than I don't know, about $80 to fill it up, and now it's over 200 The record prices could fuel higher inflation, putting more strain on American wallets. That's because diesel is essential to the supply chain. Nearly all heavy-duty trucks and nearly all trains use diesel. So do most cargo ships. And with shipping companies now facing the extra cost, consumers can expect to face higher prices on nearly everything. Even energy costs could be affected. Coal is transported to power plants in diesel-powered power trains. Diesel engines also also power most agricultural equipment, which means farmers could pass along the higher costs. Prices on those consumer goods may rise gradually, but for truckers, the pain is immediate. This law, for example, uh, made that law for $2,300. Now I'm doing it for 1900 In some parts of the country, diesel prices now top $6 per gallon. And considering many big rigs only get about six miles to the gallon, some drivers are now paying more than a dollar per mile on the highway. I'm losing money, you know. And to be honest, I don't know what I'm going to do. Meanwhile, oil companies are reporting rising profits. Chevron posting a $6.3 billion profit last week, nearly four times what the company reported this time last year. Democrats are promising legislation that would allow the Federal Trade Commission to monitor prices and go after oil companies. They are hoarding the windfall while keeping prices high for people at the pump. As for regular gas, those prices now average $4.18 a gallon, up six cents in the last week as demand ramps up before summer. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. And taking a look outside with a live cam, a little calmer this morning at 934. It was a pretty noisy overnight. It was. So we had some lightning and thunder as storms came through. Things have really quieted down. And this storm system was a big one. I mean, it took up a lot of real estate across the country as it uh, produced severe weather yesterday. It's moving east. Behind it, there is some cooler weather. We're not going to really feel any of that here. But the numbers pretty chilly as you get up towards places like Denver, where it's 34 degrees right now, 38 in Casper, 45 in Omaha. And then some warm weather out ahead of it across the entire southeastern portion of the country where there could be some more storms uh, today. We're headed into a pretty active period, it looks like, when it comes to the potential for severe weather. Not necessarily here, but across the southern half of the United States. Here's what you need to know. Mostly cloudy and breezy today here in San Antonio. Tomorrow, some morning clouds, and then we may see a few storms out west. Uh, San Antonio is, is forecast to stay dry. And then as we get into Wednesday and Thursday, we'll be watching for some storms here locally. Uh, that we could see, especially on Thursday along a weak frontal boundary. As far as temperatures go today, by the afternoon, we should be in the mid to upper uh, 80s uh, with some cloud cover hanging on. And then the cloud, the cloud cover will scoot east and then uh, fill back in tomorrow morning. We're going to get some warmer temperatures in the forecast for sure. We talked about Mother's Day, very hot. We'll look at that again and talk about May and why it's such a big month for us. That's coming up in just a few minutes, guys. All right, Justin, thank you. New recruits grow, go through a lot when they join the United States Air Force, including eight weeks of training here in San Antonio. And Jonathan Goto takes us step by step on their journey as they go through basic military training. Every young man and woman who enlists in the United States Air Force arrives here, San Antonio, Texas, Military City, USA. But their journey doesn't begin until they arrive at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland, better known as the Gateway to the Air Force. New recruits will go through eight weeks of basic military training where they'll learn everything needed to become an American airman. Uh, before you come into the military, you're civilian, you're worried about yourself at home, you only have you to watch out for. But when you come here, it's a teamwork aspect. You have to consider everybody else in this team and be able to come together and work together as one unity. Close ranks! Hatch. New recruits are introduced to drill from the moment they arrive at Lackland. Right 
heads. An important component to a recruit's training. Forward, heads, head, top, head, top. On this drill pad, they're out here approximately five to six hours a week. Uh, doing drill, if not more. Uh, sometimes we can pull them out here a little bit further. We have some downtime. We'll go out here and we can practice some more drill and really get that precision and get that discipline and instill excellence in them at all times. Throughout the eight-week training, recruits learned everything from the airmen's role in Air Force missions. Whoa! Place your weapon above your head! No! To basic Place expeditionary airmen skills and training, also known as BEAST. Alarm yellow. I repeat, alarm yellow. Ah! Alarm yellow. So this exercise, this is a culmination of every single thing that the trainees have learned out in basic training. So when they come here from their line squadrons, they've already learned their base defense skills, which we call FEST, TCCC, which is how they treat a combat casualty. A realistic forward operating base environment where they practice wartime readiness skills, also receiving Air Force nuclear, biological, and chemical warfare training. BEAST is a whole different level of training and conditioning. Instructors say the gear they wear during this specific training adds 15 degrees of body heat to what they're already experiencing. They say many of the recruits experience exhaustion and dehydration. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Pro Football Government, powered by Davis Law Firm. It's a big three-day weekend for NFL players, coaches, and fans. It was draft weekend. Cowboys and Texans both filling their uh, rosters, uh, certain need positions, of course. David are back with, along with RJ to break things down for us. It was quite a weekend Ooh, after all, wasn't uh, it? Yeah, usually yeah. we call it draft day. Now it's like draft, draft weekend. weekend. Party draft and marathon weekend. Long yeah. weekend. Yeah. <laughs> and we, had to, we were in suspense on some guys, but it mm -hmm. finally all played out the way we wanted, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, it, w it was solid. I would say that would be the uh, my takeaway from this. Solid draft by both the Cowboys and Texans. David, I know you've been looking at a lot of grades. <laughs> yeah, your well, everybody's all over. I mean, you, you read all these quote unquote pundits mm -hmm. and they've got them anywhere from an A down to a C. One guy I read had the Cowboys with the third best draft haul this year. And I'm like, really? Third best? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay. That uh, surprised you a little bit there. But, yeah. you know, they got what they needed. They, they went after some players that they needed. Yeah. They, filled, they filled some holes. Yeah. They started with an offensive tackle, and they needed some offensive linemen because their running game is just, like, non-existent towards the end of last year. So Plus, uh, Tyron Smith, yeah. I mean, he, uh, you know, is missing a lot of the season now. They lost Lyle yeah. Collins. They lost, uh, you know, a couple of different guys that are along the line here. So, Tyler Smith, pick out of Tulsa, and uh, the Cowboys actually did some decent things here. Yeah. I like the Sam Williams pick. Like, a lot of upside on that guy right a lot, there. A lot of upside on him. South Alabama, Jalen Tolbert, wide receiver. He apparently has pretty good hands and has some pretty good uh, body control. So we'll, we'll see how he works out. And then uh, the couple of picks down even further. Go to the next page and you can see, yeah, these guys, like the, the Matt Waletsko. <laughs> Great he is supposedly there. like is, is really good and was surprised mm -hmm. that he was there at yeah. 155. Yeah. And then uh, the Fresno State quarterback, cornerback, and then the um, linebacker from LSU. They're all supposedly uh, pretty good players. Yeah, and basically, like you just said, the Cowboys just basically took, they lost Randy Gregory, so they got a DN. They lost Amari Cooper, so they ended up getting a wide receiver there early on with the tackle. So they basically just kind of picked with needs. I'm guessing uh, it was uh, Stephen Jones making the calls. Yeah. <laughs> and they're not <laughs> necessarily Jerry too but much. But here's the, here's the best thing the Cowboys did. They, I mean, they got they filled some needs. Mm -hmm. They let their kicker go. Oh, really? <laughs> wow. So what did they? They signed the they Texas Tech kicker. kicker, free agent contract, baby. Guy kicked a 62 yarder to win a game last year. Are you his agent, Ooh. David? I could be. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would like to be because he might make a little money. Oh man. Um, how about the Texans? The Tex Texans had a lot to, uh, had a lot of picks in this uh, year's draft. Obviously, picking early on. What do you think of the Derek Stingley pick? I liked it. I, okay. I, and they were trying to just get some great just players guys. to fill in some. I mean, they just need the players. They just need some guys to show up to training camp with some mm -hmm. skills. That's what they need. And, you know, what was amazing is they made that trade and they ended up with like 13 picks, I yeah. think. And then yeah. they made another trade and got rid of a couple of picks. But I thought they did. The, the kid, Met Mechie from Alabama. Love that pick. What yep. a great pick that mm -hmm. is. Remember, he missed the, uh, the playoffs because he, right. got, he got injured. So he, mm -hmm. didn't, he didn't play in the last game for Alabama. But this kid is awesome. He's a great player. They got some, I, you know, they, they went to Alabama apparently and just 
<laughs> and just hung out there for a little bit. But yeah, I love the middle the part of their draft there. Yeah. yeah, I love the middle part of their draft. Petrie, Mechie, and uh, that other young man that they took there. So, yeah, it was good stuff there for the Texans. As we were saying, they're just trying to do anything, rebuild this roster, and hopefully get back to contention here pretty soon. I, I would give them as whatever the Cowboys got. I'd give the Texans at least that. <laughs> if you're going to grade them, if, the, if you're giving the Cowboys a B or mm -hmm. a B plus or an A, you've got to give the Texans, you know, I mean, yeah. Yeah. when you think about it, I mean, and they don't have the same, this year's going to be so much different because they don't have all the distractions. I don't care what anybody says, Deshaun Watson was a distraction, mm -hmm. yeah. let's mm -hmm. face it. So they don't have, they don't have that to deal with so they can get down to some business and I think they got some pretty good players. Yeah, new head coach there, Lovey Smith, uh, yeah. picking so. uh, some, some solid players there. So local players, David, also taken in this draft, love to see all these local kids uh, followed some of these. He's covered them a few years ago, JT yeah. Woods out of Steel, and of course, DeMarvin Leal, who's kind of the big name locally yeah. here. Kind of surprised he dropped as low as he did, yeah, but he's going too. to the Steelers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, that's that's defense. Good so for DeMarvin. Go. So there you go. And then a couple of kids from UTSA. Yep. Yeah, Spencer Burford is, Burford is a uh, yeah. Wagner awesome. alum and Tariq Woolen. And for people wondering, Sincere McCormick, that was also kind of the yeah. big name. Shocked yeah. that he did not get drafted, but he has signed a, uh, a free agent deal with the Seahawks. Seahawks, so okay. He can do some make some noise up there in the Pacific yeah. Northwest. Every yeah. now and then a free agent will make the team and uh, they've got a they've got a really good chance of being on the practice roster. Mm -hmm. So yeah. a lot of a lot of those guys end up if they show in something in training camp they can end up on that practice roster and there's no telling where they can go from there. Sure. You well, said the Cowboys him, actually yeah. bring guys in from the practice roster. Well, the kicker. <laughs> <laughs> the kicker. And and uh, end up uh, you know playing. So that's that's not a bad spot. All right, all done. Now there on to uh, three day weekend in Vegas. Yes, good times. Yeah. I wonder how people are feeling after that. <laughs> so now Monday we'll wait morning. for the OTAs. The OTAs. Those voluntary workouts that they pretty much want you to show up for. Semi-organized team activities. Yes. Okay. Like, okay. you can have this voluntary, but you're voluntarily required to be there. Yes, yes you are. So yes, in most we'll cases. We'll see how it works out. All, all right. right. RJ, David, thank you guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Nice wrap up. 943, about 76 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. And after the break, we're going to share some of the best deals going on this month. 947 from Mother's Day to Memorial Day. There are plenty of sales and deals in the month of May. Deal News recently looked at the best things to buy this month, and first up is for Star Wars fans. So you can expect merchandise tied to the franchise to be on sale on Wednesday, and that's thanks to May 4th and May the 4th Be With You promotions. Deal News says look to Amazon to have 30% off on some Star Wars goods. As for Mother's Day, check sites like Blue Nile for deals on jewelry, and retailers from Macy's to Nordstrom Rack are expected to offer discounts as well. And as Memorial Day rolls around, watch for sales on appliances and kitchen gadgets. Deal News says Home Depot could take as much as 50% off select appliances, and Lowe's could take $500 off. Mattresses also tend to be on sale around Memorial Day, so look for those big savings at Macy's and Kohl's. And don't forget, Justin, in-season <laughs> produce in May, everything from lettuce to sweet peas and zucchini should be plentiful. I'm talking about the vegetable, not you, yeah, yeah, Justin Horn. Right. <laughs> we want to make sure you know about these deals. I saw that. I was, I've was. i never thought about before what, uh, what produce is in season in which month, but that's good information. Lettuce yeah. to sweet peas to zucchini. Yeah. Good to know. There you go. Let's, good. Talk, let's talk about the month of May. Speaking of which, uh, where we are, th this is a severe weather season uh, for us. This is when we kind of hit the heart of severe weather season in May. We see our most, uh, most of our watches and warnings in the month of May. Uh, our average high is 83 when we start the month. The average low is 62. As we get towards the end of the month, the average high is 90. The average low is 70. So a pretty big warm up too. Precipitation we receive on average about 4.4 inches. And again, this is the peak of severe weather season. It could get pretty active next couple of weeks. We'll be keeping an eye on the radar, of course, and it was a little active last night. You look at the time lapse, boom, right there. There's some thunderstorms coming through. Switch camera angles a little bit on you. Did get some light rain here in San Antonio. Most of the heavy stuff was down to our south and west. 77 right now. Southerly winds at about 17 miles per hour. Winds will be fairly gusty today. Dew point is high and uh, it's going to be humid for the foreseeable future. 76 in New Braunfels, 73 Kerrville, 74 in Uvalde, some 80s down towards Beeville, mostly 70s here in Bear County, with the exception being Stinson, where it is already up to 80 degrees. A wind gust, gusty anywhere from 20 to 25. You can expect that to continue right on into the afternoon and evening. It's a southerly wind, so that increases our moisture levels quite a bit. The cloud cover 
likely sticks around today. There, there will be some breaks here and there, but with more cloud cover that keeps temperatures in check, we're thinking 87 for a high here in San Antonio. A little bit cooler than yesterday. 77 in Bandera, 73 Curvo. You'll be around 83 this afternoon, Canyon Lake. Dew point tracker, hmm, this doesn't change. We've got dew points in the low 70s all the way into the weekend, so it will be very humid each and every day. Uh, it's that uh, time of year, too, where we don't really get these fronts coming through, so you see the dew points stay pretty high. Here's a look at the satellite picture. We've got a bank of clouds coming into San Antonio as we speak. More clouds out to the west. It uh, breaks up quite a bit as you go east. So Gonzalez seeing some sun. New Braunfels and Marcus Blanco all seeing some sun. And as we look at the water vapor here, piece of energy came through last night. All those storms in West Texas moving east. And on the back side of it, we have fairly stable air. So that should keep things pretty quiet today uh, as this storm system, which is spinning up here, moves east. Here's a look at the forecast. So it takes a cloud, scatters them out a little bit by 5 o'clock, but by tomorrow morning, they're right back in place. Our morning overcast, which is, again, typical. We get some clouds and some drizzle to start, and then the clouds break up a little bit by the afternoon. I'll take you all the way to 8 o'clock tomorrow evening. There is a chance for a couple storms out west. We're going to put in a 20% chance in places like Del Rio. A few of those storms could cross over in from Mexico, but I don't expect them to make it really any further east than Del Rio or Eagle Pass. As we get into Wednesday, here we go again. Clouds drizzle to start and then partly cloudy skies by the afternoon. This is around 5 o'clock, not seeing much there. But as we get into the evening hours, there could be some storms developing, especially in the hill country. This is an area that I'll watch. 20% chance uh, Wednesday evening and Wednesday night. Our best chance of rain is likely going to come on Thursday. Weak frontal body sinks into the area, and that gives us a little better chance for some showers and storms, some of which could be strong to severe. Notice temperatures are near 90 next few days. Then we jump up into the upper 90s by Mother's Day weekend. It will be hot on Mother's Day with a high of 97. We'll be right back. <clears throat> Welcome back. 954. The solicitation capital murder trial of Angelica Navarro de Paz continues this morning. She is accused of trying to hire an undercover officer to kill her boyfriend's sister. Last week, she took the stand and described how she met her boyfriend's sister and what led to their fallout. Audio was also played for the jury from a meeting between Navarro de Paz and the undercover officer she allegedly tried to hire for the hit. If found guilty, she faces five to 99 years or life in prison. And coming up tomorrow on GMSA at 9, we are going to introduce you to an English teacher at Reagan High School. He works to make his students feel at home in his classroom, and is, he is KSET's Educator of the Month, so you can hear his story tomorrow at 9. It's warm, it's humid, it's mostly cloudy. We're going to see a lot of clouds today. Temperatures make it up to about 87 for a high. Next few days, we'll have some chances for storms, probably a little better chances. We get into Wednesday and Thursday, and then after that, turns hot and well, it stays humid, upper 90s over the weekend. Now, it's going to be so warm on Sunday for Mother's Day, you might want to call the restaurant and change your reservation to inside yeah. versus the patio. <laughs> Good idea. Yeah, because it's yeah. really going to be warm probably right around lunchtime, right? Uh, yeah. Probably so. Yeah, Saturday and Sunday are both looking like our warmest days. Some of the models are going even warmer than what we have. Not ready to go yeah. there yeah. yet, but uh, it will be toast. Well, Just a little breakfast. taste of summer, right? Yes, already. Yeah. Maybe breakfast yes. will be okay outside. <laughs> okay, sounds like a plan. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great day.